way. One of the things that people hold against her is, is the fact that, that she was the woman who fed the dogs. The fact that at a certain point, when two little girls, Juliette, um, Julie and Melissa, eight, two, eight year olds, were kept captive in the cellar of the house where Marc Dutour was living, which was not a house where she was living. They were not living in the same house, not living on the same roof. But anyway, in his house, in the cellar, he kept captive Julia and Melissa. And while they were in the cellar, he was arrested for something unrelated to child abduction. He was arrested for car theft. So at that time, when he, when he understood that chances were that he was going to be sent to prison, his wife, Michelle Martin, gave birth to a child. And so he went to visit her in the hospital when she had just given birth and he said look chances are that i'm going to be arrested and when i'm arrested you will have to look after julie and melissa in the cellar and eight days later indeed he was sent to prison and so she was responsible for her three children the three children that she had herself with the newborn baby but also she was responsible for julie and melissa now, we know that she chose to ignore that responsibility. She did not go and feed the children. But at a certain moment, there was a burglary in that house. And she went and told her husband in prison that his house had been burglared. So he was very upset because he's a very selfish person. He, he didn't care about people, but he did care a great deal about his possessions and about his food and so on and so forth. Uh, so he told her that she had to make sure there wouldn't be another burglary and she had to make sure that there were dogs guarding the house. So she had two dogs in her house, so she drove over, over took the dogs to that house. And apparently, she went, she continued driving over to his house to feed the dogs. So she went and fed the dogs, but she didn't go down into the cellar to give food to the children. Now this is something, we aren't certain whether this is actually how it happened, because at the time of their arrest, the dogs were emaciated. The dogs apparently, although in, I mean in the collective consciousness in Belgium, she's the woman who went and fed the dogs, but at the same time you will read in the trials, in the reports of the trials, that the dogs had not been fed that they were very, very skinny and emaciated. So there is a kind of conflict there. At the same time, it is said that at the time of the, when he, when he returned from his prison sentence, when he had served that prison sentence for the car theft, that he found the kids were dead. But at the same time, some people say, well, no, the kids had already died before he was sent to prison for car theft. So what I want to say is that there are many, many elements in that case that to the present day are unclear. And what I don't understand is why, why Michel Martin refuses to tell us exactly what happened, right? Because it seems to me, and not only to me, but also to other people who have studied the case, that this conviction that we have in Belgium that she's the woman who fed the dogs but failed to feed the kids in the cellar, but this may actually not be based on the truth, that it may not be the truth, that it's a kind of myth. However, as with many myths, this myth is so powerful that even, even if the truth someday were unearthed, we would still be, she would still remain the woman who fed the dogs but failed to feed the children. This is something that has taken firm root in, in our collective consciousness. And, and she's hated for it. She's, she's hated for it with a passion that is very hard to understand. Uh, to, to my dismay, I find that many people in Belgium, to a certain extent, are willing to have a certain degree of understanding for Mark Dutou, in a kind of, well, boys will be boys manner, right? Uh, but people have not an ounce of 
pity or understanding for Michelle Martin because people say, well, she's a woman, she was a mother, how could she not save those children? So she did not kidnap the children, she did not rape them, she did not and imprison them. What she, the, her crime was what she did not do, you see? She knew about it, she didn't phone the police, she didn't go to a police office, uh, she, she failed to save them. So her role was one of a kind of passive witness, a passive accomplice, right? And, and you find that on the whole, people judge her a lot harsher than they judge him. And, and well, I, I think that this tends to happen quite often, that people judge women more harshly, and women judge women more harshly uh, than they judge men. But this is beside, in between brackets. Uh, now what happened is, as I have to situate this, I'm going to read very, very briefly, because I, but I have to sort of situate uh, uh, um, the, the novel a little bit, is that in the summer of 2012, uh, Michelle Martin had spent 16 years in prison for her part in the crimes of her husband. But she had behaved very well in prison, and for that reason, uh, she was entitled to early release on conditions. Uh, so it became clear, there was word in the press, that she would be released after 16 years, having served 16 years of the 30 years that she had to serve. Uh, so people said, a mere 16 years, quite frankly, I find 16 years in prison a very long time. But they said, okay, a mere 16 years. And that she was going to be released on conditions. Now on conditions, <coughs> there are three conditions. A, you have to have an income, B, you have to have a roof under your, over your head, and three, you have to be willing to see a, a psychiatrist or a therapist or whatever. Now, the first two conditions could be met with the help of nuns. So there was a convent in the south of the country, uh, a convent in Malone, with, with nuns, Christian Catholic nuns, who said, okay, we, we are willing to receive this sinner, because if you are at all acquainted with the Catholic religion, in the Catholic religion, it's very important to save souls. You have to save them for Christ, okay? Because Christ in heaven is crying for every soul that has been lost, so it's a good deed to save a soul. And from the very start, when Michel Martin had been sent to prison, a, a nun, and I later found that she shares my name, she's also called Christine, Sir Christine. So Sir Christine had word from God uh, that she had to go to prison and visit this poor sinner and, and try to, to lead her back to the fold of the believers. And so uh, she said, okay, we, we have to do this for Michelle Martin. We have to offer her an opportunity uh, to, to, to rebuild her life, we have to offer her a second chance. So the nuns were the only ones, apparently, in the country, more or less the only ones, who felt that way. And so, of course, also the convent in Malone was besieged by extremely angry people. The nuns were very old. Uh, they have since moved out. The convent has been closed down, and they are now in a home in Brussels. And a retired judge has given her shelter. So she's now living in a flat in the house of uh, Monsieur Panier, a retired uh, judge. Outside the walls of the prison, people shout that I am a whore, a murderess, a monster, a psychopath. They shout that I'm worse than M, that's my new term. It's not him, but me who is the devil, they say and they hold up signs with the names of the girls on them, the four who died and the two who were saved. The posters also crop up again everywhere. She was not the downtrodden wife, says the father of a victim on television. During the trial, the jury studied all the evidence carefully. The conclusion was clear. She was not a submissive wife. Not only did she hold the camera, but she gave him instructions. She told him what to do. She ached him on. They all deserved punishment. They were dirty and filthy. They, the girls who were raped, etc. The punishment was off with their panties, bent over and a smack on the bottom. No smacks, but thrusts of his penis in the cantor ass. 
brand it and put in their place, then his penis in their mouth afterwards, a plaster stuck over it, and on that plaster stamp, property of M. In a little while, when this sister Virginie, I call her Virginie, which is Christine, comes, I shall ask her to sit down. I will fill a bowl of water and put it by her feet. I will untie her shoelaces and take off her socks and shoes. I will submerge her feet in the water. I will lather them and submerge them again. I shall dry her feet with my hair, my blonde angel's hair. Then I shall prostrate myself in front of her. Save me, I will ask her. Drive the devil out of my head, my heart, my body. My body is no longer the temple of God. The devil has captured it. He has forced his way in with his soldiers and set up camp. I did not resist strongly enough. I let him overcome my body, drive him out, I beg you, please. I shall stay lying down until I feel her wonderfully cool hand on my head and hear her voice say the words, Stand up, daughter. I will care for you. We will care for you. It is the will of God. He wants the sisters to look after me. I will cook for them and they will look after me. If the devil knocks at the door or taps at the windows, they will drive him away. They will chase him away with prayers and incense. We will sing together. With my hair, I will polish the tiles on which the nuns walk. Not walk, but shuffle because oh they are so very very old don't die i shall beg them stay alive for me for my soul the soul of the most hated woman in the country look after her <laughs>